Okay. So uh, now that uh, we understand the three Newton's laws of motion, uh, we should understand uh, this technique uh, very clearly. Okay. So this is a very, very important uh, technique, free body diagram. Okay. So this actually helps us uh, take into account the relevant forces acting on an object and uh, literally ignore forces which are not relevant to us. Okay. So th this is absolutely, in fact, a technique which is like, it's not optional. Okay. You, you have to uh, draw a free body diagram for any problem uh, that is based on Newton's laws of motion. Okay. So okay. I think uh, the best thing uh, to do here is uh, we should actually take up some scenarios or problems and then try and understand okay. how to get this uh, free body diagram and then uh, use it to solve problems. Okay. So it's a, it's a very, very important technique. Okay. And okay. then uh, this is what I normally uh, say in my classes, like these free body diagrams are never free. Okay. So you have to draw them. Okay. So they're not okay. given to you. Okay. And then it's, it's the first step. I mean, uh, there are, there's another thing when uh, Newton's laws of motion problems become a little complicated, like when you have to analyze uh, the motion between uh, two objects, if they're constrained. Okay, I'll come to those type of uh, problems later. Uh, in such situations, there is some analysis known as uh, constraint analysis uh, that we have to do. Okay, so otherwise, if uh, the problems are really simple, you would always actually start from a free body diagram. Okay. Yeah. So let's. Okay. So uh, in this uh, problem. Uh, we have a pulley which is fixed. Okay, so this pulley is fixed. Yeah. And there are two blocks which are uh, attached to the ends of a string. And our string is both massless and uh, non stretchable. Okay, so okay. the string is massless. and uh, inextensible. Okay, so this is the basic uh, problem that uh, anyone learns uh, when they first try to work with Newton's laws of motion. Okay. Yeah. Now, if I make an assumption that uh, M1, the mass of a block, let's say, uh, first block, let's say this is the first block. And this is the second block. If M1 is greater than M2, we are typically asked a few questions. Let's say uh, we are asked the acceleration of these uh, blocks or maybe okay. the tension in the string. Okay, so the force uh, at any cross section in the string. Okay, okay. And the other assumption is uh, till you learn, let's say, other uh, topics, our pulley is also massless. Now, when they say massless, the mass is like so small that we can actually ignore. Okay, so these are assumptions. And there is another assumption that there is no friction between the surface of the pulley and the string. So all these are assumptions. Okay. Okay, so no friction. between the string and the surface of the pulley. Okay, so now uh, when we are trying to get these target values, okay, so we, we are, of course, uh, going to go with the game plan uh, given by Newton. So that is, yeah. we're going to use the Newton's laws of motion, but this free body diagram, the technique is going to be very, very important. Okay. 
Now, again, two things here. Uh, how many objects are there? There are two objects. Yeah. Uh, in, I mean, uh, sometimes uh, when we draw free body diagram, we just assume a particle for each of the blocks. But uh, it is okay. I mean, either you can just uh, put a dot and then say that this is M1. Okay, so I, I just take a dot that represents a particle and that is our block with mass M1. Okay. Yeah, so uh, should I just tell you what A is in terms of... Like, like I told you, this is a chapter of very high importance. Okay. Yeah. So it's okay to go very slowly. Uh, okay. Yeah. See. Now try to understand, we, we are just trying to appreciate this technique called free body diagram. Now, when I say, uh, what is a free body diagram? You're isolating the object. Okay, so if I take this uh, M1, I'm isolating that object as a particle. Okay, now it is up to you. If you want to take it as a particle, you will anyway take it as a particle, but if you want to draw a dot or you want to just place a block and then say that is M1, uh, first block, because I normally prefer uh, having a block. Okay, but I think yeah. this... Uh, point is also okay. okay. Now, okay. see, the free body diagram should have all the relevant forces that are acting on the particle. So here, uh, if we say that this is the free body diagram, okay, so we short form, we use FBD. So free body diagram of block one. Yeah. So when you use that, now think about what objects in the environment are interacting with M1. Can you tell the objects which are interacting with M1? So that, that is the thinking uh, you should have. Okay, yeah, so gravity is obviously affecting no, no, no. M1. Gravity is the force that are oh, applies. but objects, okay. Objects, objects are, are the string, the tension in the string. Uh, yes, the string is applying. Tension is the force applied by the string. Okay. And Earth is the other object which is applying gravitational force. So yeah. if I, uh, let's say, show them as vectors, okay? So the gravitational force is M1G, is it okay? Yes, yes. And the tension applied by the string is, we, we are calling it as T in the upward direction. Okay. Now, that completes the free body diagram. And then uh, by the side of the diagram, you can place a dotted line and then say, okay, you know that, okay, because M1 is greater than M2, the direction in which this block would move is downwards. Okay, so you can just place an arrow and then place A. So that completes the free body diagram. Yeah, yeah. Are you getting? Now, yeah, yeah. if I do the same thing for the block, uh, the other block, okay. So if I'm trying to get uh, FBD of block two, Abhiram, we will be doing like many, many problems. So you will get plenty of opportunity to practice. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So if I take this again, I'm saying you don't have to, let's say instead of M1, I could use just a dot. Okay. But I don't prefer a dot. So I usually, uh, let's say put blocks. So then what forces are acting on uh, M2? Again, the gravitational force. Yes. M2G, and then what other force is acting? Uh, tension force is acting upon it. Okay, so tension is acting in the upper direction. Now, uh, tell me one thing. Would this be the same tension as this, or will it be different? So I'm, let's uh, say, calling it, it would as, be the same tension, right? Why would it be the same? Because it's the, like the same piece of string is there, so they'll both be like... Very nice, very nice. Because yeah, yeah. That, that's, that's a very uh, important point. That's very nice, Abhiram. So if I take a portion of a string here, so let's say if I look at the free body diagram of the string, yeah, FBD of string, uh, maybe I'll just try to, let's say I've, I've taken a portion of the string, okay, so string portion. Now this okay. tension is actually arising because of the intermolecular attraction inside the string. So if I take this uh, portion of the string, the other string particles above and below, they're applying 
let's say forces on this section so if i say that the particles above are going to apply let's say t up suppose and the particles yeah. below this uh, string portion are applying t down now definitely if the blocks are moving this string portion is also moving yeah okay but what is our assumption our assumption is the string is massless okay because the string is massless uh, we will slowly see that these two tensions will be same now how can i say that uh, let, let's imagine uh, this has some acceleration a the string portion has some acceleration a now what is newton second law net force is equal to mass into acceleration now if i yeah. apply this for our portion of the string i would say okay so tension coming from the upper uh, part of the string let's say you have molecules there they are applying uh, force on this portion of the string and then tension in the downward direction that is equal to mass of that uh, string portion into acceleration but we are saying the entire string is massless so we can neglect it so that means this is almost zero so that means if i take any portion of the string on let's say either side of that string portion the tension will be same yeah okay so then you are okay here by saying that at any cross section the tension is same okay okay now if block 1 is going down with acceleration a uh, they are connected by a st same string so that means they are yeah. constrained to move if uh, block 1 is going down block 2 must go up and obviously with the same acceleration because every time they will have the same speed i am sure you understand this yeah yeah right okay now what we do is we sort of apply uh, net force is equal to mass into acceleration for each of these blocks now when you do that you will have to take a preferred direction being positive okay so ideally uh, let's say if i take downward direction as positive suppose okay so if i take down the downward direction is positive in both cases you can do that okay or you can actually change uh, for both of them one could be positive the other let's say upward could be positive now here uh, what will i write here m1j is pointing in the downward direction so that is plus m1j yeah and tension is pointing in the upward direction minus t now remember what i said yesterday never give a sign to the acceleration the acceleration depends on the net force so right side yeah. you never try to attach any sign okay i know yeah. i have taken downward direction as positive but this is for the forces because forces dictate acceleration so i'll simply write m1 into a so this is my first equation and what is the second equation here uh i'm going to apply for the block 2 okay. okay so i've taken downward direction as positive so i'll get m2 g minus tension is equal to m2 Same into a yeah hmm? are you okay here yeah 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 so then what do we do here Um, so we know the we can find the tangent force of m2. yes so we we can uh, suppose if i if i rewrite this let's say the second equation uh if i multiply by minus 1 on both sides okay so i get m minus m2g this becomes uh, plus t and this is equal to minus m2a yeah so then okay uh, we are already in little trouble can you see why um it will become a trouble 
why will there be trouble? We can just add like M two G to both sides, right? And then we'll find yeah. the tension. But uh, we we are in trouble. Can you think? Um, I will tell you. Okay. The idea here is, if you are picking, let's say for both of them, if you are picking the downward direction as positive. Okay. Yeah. Remember what I said. I said I don't know the direction of the acceleration. The direction of the yeah. acceleration is given by the forces. So yes. what this uh, sign convention says is, okay, what the sign convention says is, assumed direction of acceleration is downwards. Okay. Okay. Assumed direction. of acceleration is downwards okay now if you uh, I, i think if i re, if i am trying to do this i should not show a like this okay what what i should do is i'm going to take this as uh, a1 so this will be like 1 and i'm going to show A two here, and then I will use A two here. Yeah. Okay. You you you're getting? Yeah. But what we know about A one and A two is, if A one is plus A, I know A two is minus A. Okay. Because block one is coming down, block two is going up. Yeah, you, you understand. So in this problem, it would have been nicer if you had taken different sign conventions for the for both blocks. But since we have taken the same convention, let's say the anything pointing downward direction is positive, your assumed direction of acceleration is also downwards. Uh, are you okay? Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Then you add these two equations. Okay, so this is our uh, second equation. So adding equations one and two. So what do we get here? I think we get uh, m one g. Minus m two g, the tension disappears, and then I get uh, m one a one. Okay, minus m two a two. Now, when I substitute uh, these, uh, let's say a values, let's say instead of uh, a one, so I get m one a minus m two into minus. A. I I know this might look I'm making it overly complicated, uh, but trust me. it's not okay so we are trying to be careful about our sign convention here okay so then if you see this on the right hand side uh, what happens this is like m1 plus m2 into a yeah then uh, the acceleration okay the magnitude of acceleration will be m1 minus m2 G divided by m1 plus m2. So once we get that, I can use either of the equations to get uh, tension. So suppose if I use the first equation, first equation yeah. says m1 G minus tension is equal to m1 into a1, which is a. So if I substitute here, I get m1. Into m1 minus m2 into g divided by m1 plus m2. Okay. So now uh, let's say I'm going to take uh, tension on one side, and uh, if I take m1 g common, I think this algebra you should be able to handle. So one minus I get uh, m1 minus m2. By m1 plus m2, so what do we have here? 
I think uh, M1 disappears and then uh, you will get two. Abraham, I'm sure you're okay with this, right? Yeah, yeah. Okay. Now, what I was trying to say earlier is, uh, let, let's let's put the free body diagrams again here. So if I take M1, the gravitational force is acting in the downward direction. The tension is acting in the upward direction. Now you know that this block is going to go down because we have take considered M1 is greater than M2. Now in this okay. case, you can assume that for this block, the direction, let's say the downward direction is positive and for the other block, you know, it is going to go up. So why is it going up? The tension uh, is assumed to be greater than the gravitational force. It is going to go up. Now, because it is going to go up with acceleration A, for this block, I can take anything pointing upward direction as positive. Okay, so here, uh, if I slow down things a bit, it's like for block one, the gravitational force is dominating. So I'm going to take any vector pointing in that direction as positive. For block two, the tension is dominating. So I'm going to take vectors in that direction as positive. Okay, so that way you don't have to take A1 and A2. Okay, so you can just simply write here as M1G minus tension is equal to mass into acceleration. And then here you can write tension minus M2G into mass into acceleration. It's the same thing. Okay. It's, it's not uh, different yeah. from what we have read, but I think this is preferred. And sometimes okay. for this simple scenario, uh, what students do is if you look on either side of the pulley. Okay. So you have M1G and M2G. Okay. So if you, if you consider on either side of the pulley, Okay, so you have a, a force M1G here and M2G on the other side. Uh, I, I don't know. I don't suggest this, but uh, it's okay. I mean, sometimes what kids do is, uh, I think they try to treat it as a train. Okay. So it's like as if they're connected like this and they placed on a horizontal surface. Okay, uh, by the way, this looks very crooked, but imagine that this is a horizontal surface. Yeah, now, yeah. somehow this M1 is pulled with a force of M1G. And the okay. other block is pulled with a force in the other direction with M2G. Yeah. So in that case, the net force is M1G minus M2G. The total mass is M1 plus M2. So you just write down the acceleration quickly like this. But I don't yeah. know how quickly is that. I don't understand. But uh, I suggest you better go with first drawing the free body diagram. The yeah, second yeah. step is write clearly uh, your uh, equations by utilizing Newton's second law. Then you solve. Okay. Okay. Okay, so in this uh, problem, you have two blocks uh, which are uh, placed next to each other. Abhiram? Abhiram? Yeah. Uh, are you there? Yes. Yeah, yeah. Can you, can you see me? Yes, yes, yes. Okay. So here, uh, I have two blocks that are placed next to each other. So... Well, let's call them as A and B. So mass of uh, A is, let's say, M sub A, and then mass of B is M sub B. And then let's say a person comes along and then applies a horizontal force to block A. So this is the horizontal force applied.
and uh, for this purpose we will just assume that there is no friction okay so no friction no friction yeah. between the blocks and the horizontal surface now can you find the acceleration of the blocks okay so try to get these two acceleration of the blocks and then uh, what is the normal reaction or let's say the force of interaction between blocks uh, a and b okay so what is the uh, force of interaction magnitude of force of interaction uh, between the blocks so the acceleration it will just be the horizontal force over uh, ma plus mb right fantastic which we can do that mass. so here uh, what is your system the system is uh, well the whole thing is the system right the very nice because they are anyway moving together that that's really nice so you can yeah. take both of them as a system good so you can take both of this uh, both of them as a system then if i look at uh, newton second law the only force we have is uh, f and let's say a is the acceleration very good abiram yes so we can say ma plus mb and then multiplied by acceleration a so a will be f by ma plus mb now okay so now can you find the force of interaction between them if we look at uh, the newton's third law suppose if i am looking at force applied by a on b and then force applied on b by a they necessarily have to be equal and opposite by newton's third law yeah so either of them is fine okay so we're just getting uh, trying to get the magnitude of force of interaction between them okay so can you get this so see here what we can do is uh, i can either take uh, my system as uh, block a or block b suppose if i take my system as block b yeah okay so if i consider uh, my system as block b oh what happened <laughs> one second okay so let's say that is block b now uh, who is applying force on block uh, b uh block a is applying force block a is applying okay yeah so that is uh, the force on b by a now yeah they would block b will also have the same acceleration that we just have we just obtained yes right and then if i apply newton's uh, second law this is the only force that is acting horizontally on uh, b so that should be equal to yeah, mass yeah. of b into acceleration so that yeah. would be mb f by ma plus mb okay you're okay okay alternatively yeah. what we can do is uh, you can take the free body diagram of a so if i look at the free body diagram of a so this is a and horizontally if you see you have this external force coming from the left side and a is interacting with b so b is going to apply force on a in the left direction so that i'm going to take it as uh, a force on a by b now what is the net force here hmm? very good so here we can say the net force is uh, f minus f ab and then that is equal to mass of a into acceleration right so yeah. here uh, if i substitute the acceleration that i have obtained so ma into f by 
एम ए प्लस एम बी देन वट वी गेट हियर सो if you look at it okay so f a b will be i'll take f common and then if you look at it i'll get 1 minus m a by m a plus m b okay so you end up having uh, the same thing okay m a minus m a that would disappear you will get the same answer uh, do you see this it yeah. is okay uh, i can use any of the free body diagrams but i think in this case using the free body diagram of b is much easier okay yeah and okay now uh, one question for you uh, aren't uh, there any other forces acting on a and b uh, i mean there is gravitational force but it's being counteracted with the normal force right yes very good so the gravitational force is uh, balanced by the normal force and moreover we are not interested in the vertical direction okay yeah. since we are not interested in the vertical direction in our free body diagram it is okay to skip them right okay okay yeah okay so how so are you... these being connected like how did you so you look at the problem Yeah, I can. I'm seeing the problem. I'm trying to understand how to. So there are two blocks here, and then two pulleys, and our pulleys, as usual, are massless. Yeah. And the string is massless and inextensible. So this is how they are connected. Now your task is to find the acceleration of the blocks. Okay. Okay. So find the acceleration of the blocks. uh also the tension in the string yeah okay so find the tension in the string okay so i don't know the answer so we will have to discuss uh, together okay i just gave some let's say 4 kg 3 kg okay you this, can take you can take g as 10 okay yeah so this 3 kg like it's connected to the center of the pulley so it's not going to be along that string yeah no no it is going to be uh, yeah it is connected to the center of the string yes sorry okay. what am i saying it is connected to the center of the pulley yes you're right okay to to the center uh so the pulley might go down right oh yes yes okay and both pulleys are massless and the strings are also not stretching and they're massless yes okay maybe that oh, okay okay maybe i should tell this okay our assumptions still continue here uh what is the assumption there is no friction between string and the pulley oh so that means it's like it's going to just slip over on the string no friction so But does we, that mean that this uh, 3 kg doesn't move at all it will just stay uh no 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 i'm not saying that see the uh, i'll tell you what happens is no friction between string and pulley now what this means is okay so imagine let's say imagine uh, if i draw a line uh, on the pulley so let's say if i take these two points a and b now as the 3 kg block goes down the pulley is in an orientation let's say the pulley goes down a little okay so i mean the 3 kg block uh, comes down a little and obviously if the 3 kg block comes down by a certain distance the pulley this pulley also must come down by the same distance now because there is no friction the pulley is going to slip on the string right or the uh, string is slipping on the pulley surface so what will happen to this uh, a and b they'll just be oriented like this you understand yeah. i mean yes. uh, ideally i i should everything is happening right here 
everything is happening right here you you get the idea so as 3 kg block goes down the pulley is just moving down that's it okay it okay. is just slipping on the string it is not rotating okay yeah yeah i mean whenever you have a single string uh, in most of yeah, these cases and, uh, tension should tension. also be okay okay yeah then we can discuss yeah. okay so let, let's look at it this way okay so here uh, the first thing that you must understand is how are the accelerations of uh, let's say the first thing uh, you have to understand is the acceleration of block a or oh, sorry 3 kg and 4 kg block how are they connected okay so uh, let me repeat this point you understand this right because there is no friction between the string and the pulley so if i just draw a random line on the pulley and then take uh, the end points as a and b as 3 kg block goes down the pulley is just falling down vertically okay so it's not rotating yeah. so those a and b points at the end of the dotted line will just remain uh, kind of wherever they are they're just moving down vertically are you okay yeah okay now uh, the constraint analysis is kind of a logical step okay so let's look at uh, this i think we can get that visually uh, let me ask you this question if okay so if 3 kg block has to go down by 1 cm if i say that uh, this is pulley 1 okay if this is pulley 1 and this is pulley 2 do you agree that if 3 kg block has to go down by 1 cm then the pulley 2 must also go down by 1 cm um yeah you you agree that okay yes, yes. now imagine let's say imagine uh, one of your friends let's say held the 4 kg block and the pulley 1 in position okay so mentally okay. try to imagine that from here and till here everything is held at rest yeah. you are able to imagine that let's say yeah. from the 4 kg block to this pulley 1 and then this string everything is held at rest so if your friend holds uh, let's say those objects at rest is it really possible to take pulley 2 down no Because it is not possible right yeah. ha huh. so that means uh, and again if you observe from here you are not getting any extra string so this is kind of a fixed okay. length you cannot the pulley cannot obtain any extra string in order to go down so where is the entire string uh, drawn from the entire string is drawn from the left side of pulley 2 you're okay, okay. yeah so now okay carefully listen to this if pulley 2 has to go down by 1 cm are we not looking at like a requirement of 1 cm on this side of the pulley left side of the pulley as well as right side of the pulley yeah yeah okay so th this is what i am saying let me write uh, that down okay so if pulley 2 has to go down by 1 cm yeah and by no means i am saying that it is going to go down i am just assuming okay has to go down by 1 cm we need 1 cm string on either side of the pulley yeah either side of pulley to okay. okay so okay i hope you understand that now yeah where do i get that string from i get that string by moving 4 kg block up yeah 
so that means can i say that i will have to move the 4 kg block up by how many centimeters you have to move it up by 1 in order or by 2 in order for that pulley to go down by 1 very good so i'll have to move it up by 2 cm uh, are you able to understand this yeah but uh, but isn't uh, the 4 kg block going to be moving down ha huh. that, that that is besides the point we we don't know oh wait what okay. i have assumed yeah. is if if 3 kg block has to go down huh. then the 4 kg block has to move okay. up yeah okay. you could be right okay so you could be right that the 3 kg block would go up because uh, i think uh, logically speaking i mean uh, when i say logically if you look at the situation here i think uh, on the 3 kg block there are uh, there's additional tension okay on uh, 4 yeah. kg block there is only one tension here but if i look at the 3 kg block i think there are like two tensions acting so what you are saying is correct i think your observation is uh, absolutely correct when you say that 3 kg block would actually move up you're okay abira yeah can can we switch to your uh, perception let's say i will consider that uh, 3 kg block is moving up and then 4 kg block is moving down can we do that yeah okay so let's do that okay so let me redraw them here I'll just put four, okay? Yeah. Okay. Now, can I say, if three kg block is moving up by one centimeter, then the four kg block should move down by two centimeters? Can I say that? Down by two. Yes. Yeah. yeah. So that means uh, the displacements are in the ratio of one is to two. Okay. So maybe I'll just write it down yep. here. Uh, one second. Okay, so I'm going to write it down here. The upward displacement of three kg mass is, let's say, uh, I think it will be. Ah, uh, okay. So it will be half, right? It will be half of the downward displacement of. Four kg. Are you are you okay? Yeah. Okay. So now what this uh, means is the downward displacement of four kg block is twice the upward displacement of three kg block. So we can say that velocity, or we can say the speed of four kg block. or we can say velocity itself and then take magnitude okay so the magnitude of velocity of Sorry. 4 kg is two times the magnitude of velocity of 3 kg block yeah yeah okay now if you continue uh on velocity the acceleration depends so we can say acceleration of the uh, 4 kg block is twice that of the 2 kg block very good okay so okay okay uh, i know i mean if you can mentally agree to this i don't have to write uh, but you agree to these ideas yes yes okay now what i can do here is in the diagram i'm just placing that a is the acceleration of 3 kg block then what will be the acceleration of 4 kg block it will be 2a okay 
now this is the first step that you will have to do whenever uh, the blocks are connected in a way that they may not have the same acceleration okay in terms of magnitude as well as direction okay so yeah. if they don't have same accelerations you will have to figure out what is the connection between the accelerations okay so whatever we have done here so far our analysis this is known as constraint analysis okay uh are you with me yeah okay now then uh, the next uh, step comes when you try to get the free body diagrams of these two blocks okay so let's get the free body diagram of the blocks okay so i'll put um, fbd of 4 kg first okay so let's take the 4 kg block okay so tell me what forces are acting on this 4 kg block uh gravity is acting upon the 4 kg block okay so since we are uh, taking g as 10 i'll take that as 40 newtons yeah 40 newtons okay and then this tension acting on it in the upper direction yes okay now if you look at our uh, situation are uh, the same strings applying forces on uh, 4 kg and 3 kg e, yes the same strings are no no look at oh, it oh sorry oh yeah yeah different Not, strings right yeah, different so strings. then i cannot say that the tension is same so i'll have to use a different uh, tension so let me call it as t1 okay and then here i have said okay i have assumed that it is going down with acceleration 2a so anything pointing downward direction is positive for me okay yeah so this is my free body diagram then what do i do i write an equation using newton's second law so if i do net force is equal to mass into acceleration okay i have, I have assumed that 40 newtons is dominating so it will be 40 minus tension is equal to mass into acceleration which is 4 into 2a are you okay so far yeah okay now let us get the free body diagram of 3 kg okay so 3 kg you can say it's getting pulled down with a force of 30 newtons ha huh, very And nice the tension force up you call it t2 very good so we'll have to take a different tension so tension i'll take it as t2 and yeah. uh, this is 30 newtons and then we have assumed that it has acceleration a in the upper direction so i'm going to take for this free body diagram i'm going to take upper direction as positive is it okay yeah and then here uh, t2 minus 30 will be mass into acceleration 3 into a now how many equations do we have we have uh, two equations and two okay how many unknowns do we have how many variables do we have uh three three so can we solve uh, for a and tensions no no so we need one more equation yeah So now, can you tell me how we can get one more equation? Um, could we not have solved for a of like the acceleration of the block moving down at the beginning, saying like uh, we if we say like forty minus like the the force pulling the block down minus the force going up for the uh, other block? So I said that. Uh, Forty minus thirty is equal to seven a. Like oh massive. no no no! But 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 Abhiram, in that case you are actually assuming that they are moving with the same magnitude of acceleration. Oh yeah okay ah. okay yeah. I mean okay. the way the way they are connected it is not possible. Okay. Ah, had it been possible, yes, you you yeah, have a okay. point there. But uh, that that's the whole uh, point of our discussion, right? 
so in yeah. this the way they are connected we are actually we first spend time in figuring out how their accelerations are related okay right yeah yeah okay yeah. okay so now what we can do is uh, now pay attention to this pulley 2 okay we're going to look at the free body diagram of pulley 2 okay fbd of pulley 2 Okay, so now if I take FPD of pulley 2, okay, now what forces are acting on this pulley? So let's say mass of the pulley is MP. Okay, I'll take mass of the pulley as MP. What forces are acting on this? The mass that's at there is uh, 3 kg acting down on it. Ah, uh, okay. Here we have to understand that 3 kg is not directly applying force on uh, pulley. So 3 kg is applying force on string. The string is transferring the force onto the pulley. Oh, okay. So the, the string, like the tension of the string or? Yes. How would the you tension say okay. on the string. Okay. So, okay, so T2 is pulling it down with a force of 30. Uh, no, uh, we don't know T2 is 30, right? T2 cannot be 30. Oh, okay, okay, okay. Yeah, so no, it is just T2. Okay. So in the free body diagram, we're going to just place <laughs> forces which are relevant, okay, which are directly getting applied on our object. So T2 yeah. is definitely. Then can I also say that the strings above, they're also pulling it up, they're lifting it. So if you see here. Yeah, so you can say, yeah, they're lifting it up. So they're lifting it up. So it is a single string. So everywhere I can say T1. So yeah. on the pulley, on either side of the pulley, I can say that uh, there is tension T1 here. And there yeah. is tension T2 here. How about the gravitational force? The gravitational force is also acting upon the pulley. Okay, right? so is also acting upon the pulley. So MP. Now if 3 kg block is going up, can I say that this pulley is also going up with acceleration A? Yeah. Okay. Now for this guy, I will also consider uh, vectors pointing upwards as positive. Okay. Okay. So now if I apply Newton's second law, okay. So what do I get? See, oh, sorry. I made a mistake here. So this is not T2, right? This is also T1. It's T1. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So you have to catch me. Huh? Sometimes I make mistakes. Okay. Okay. Uh, also for MP, uh, will that not be zero because there's Fantastic. no mass? Fantastic. Fantastic. MP is zero. Nice. Nice. Yeah. So MP is just zero. So I don't, I don't really need that MPG, right? Yeah. 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 Very nice. Very nice. So here, if I use the Newton second law in the upper direction of two T one downward direction of MPG again, which is negligibly small minus T two is equal to mass into mass of the pulley into acceleration. So now wherever you have mass of the pulley, I can like say that I don't even look at it. Yeah. So then what do we get here? We get that 2t minus uh, 2t minus t 2 into t1 minus t2 is equal to zero. I know. So 2t1 is t1, t2, right? Yeah, yeah. I, was, I was saying, I, oh, I was just reading the first equation. The oh, okay. T1 okay. minus T2. Yeah, so yeah, T2 is equal to 2 into T1. Yeah. Now can we solve for accelerations and tensions? Yeah, because we have a third equation. Now, right? Very good. Yeah. So since we have the third equation, let's say if I go to our first equation, uh, what I can do is I can just write 40 minus T1 is 4 into 2A, okay. so that is 8A. So I'm going to transfer that here. So 40 minus T1 is 8A. And then if you look at the second equation, I have T2 minus 30 is 3A. So instead of T2, I will take it as 2T1. You're okay, Abraham? Yeah. yeah, so yeah. 2T1 minus 30 
is 3a okay now what i can do is if i can multiply my first equation with 2 yeah okay on either side i'll get this equation i'll get 8t minus minus 2t1 uh, is equal to 16 is equal to 16a Oh, and then you can uh, factor in uh, T2 for both those equations. Yes. So uh, on a lighter note, when we do Newton's laws of motion involving strings, you're always trying to reduce the tension in life. To get oh, that. Okay. Yeah. You reduce the tensions disappear yeah. here. So I have 80 minus 30 okay. is 50, right? And okay. the right hand side, what do I have? 19. Uh, yeah. So what is the acceleration, magnitude of acceleration? We're getting 50 by 19 meter per second square. 50 by okay? 19. So what is the acceleration of 3 kg block? 3 kg block is, yeah, we are getting positive. So your prediction was correct. You said that 3 kg should go up. So you're absolutely right on that point. Okay, so 3 kg moves up with this okay. acceleration. So yeah, so then uh, the 4 kg will be moving at 100 over 19. Very nice, very square. nice. Yes. Okay. Uh, so 4 kg will be moving down with 100 over 19. Yes. So let's say 2a will be 100 over 19. So that's the acceleration of 4 kg block. So I'll just write ACC. 4 kg and then I'll place a downward arrow so that it is going down. Okay, now that you have yeah. acceleration, you can find the tensions. Yeah. yeah, Viram? Yes, yes. Yeah, so let's say if I use the first equation, uh, which is uh, 2t1 minus 30 is equal to 3 into a. So 3 into, this is 50 by 19. So from here, I'll get uh, 2t1 as 30 plus, this is like 150 by 19. So I think we'll have to solve this. So 3 into 19 will be 570, right? Yeah. So, sorry, 57. So that's like 570. Then uh, if I add uh, 150, uh, we get 720. You're okay? Yeah. 720 by 19. Yep. So then the tension acting in the left string is uh, 360 by 19. Abiram, don't okay. worry. Okay. So uh, these problems initially, you will have to like, uh, try them out on your own several problems and then you'll get it. But uh, again, my point is give as much time effort as possible for these two chapters. Okay. Newton's laws of motion and work and energy. Your life in learning physics will be easier after that. Okay. Yeah. Okay. And again, uh, conditions apply. Yeah. You'll have to work okay. hard to make it easier. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so then uh, once we have this, uh, I think the tension in the other string T2 is 2T1 anyway. So that's 720 by 19 Newtons. Okay, so any questions here? No, okay. I think I understood. Yeah, now I will teach you one more way to get the relation between the accelerations. Okay, so let, let's look at that. Okay, Abhiram, here I'm just calling uh, these 4 kg and 3 kg as B and A. Okay, now we are trying to find a connection between the accelerations here. Okay, so by using a very important uh, idea. Now the idea here is if you observe, we said the string is inextensible, right? Yes. So that means we can't stretch it. 
so if we can't stretch the string can i say that the length of the string is constant yes okay so the length of the string is constant okay so this is another important technique so uh, pay attention uh, let's say if i take uh, length of the string as l okay suppose length is l mathematically if i take a time derivative of this length what should i get if the length of the string is constant a time derivative of length will be so the rate at which it changes will be okay so if the length is uh, constant the rate at which length is changing is zero right del by dt is zero you yeah. okay now yeah what we do is in this case yes. uh, we sort of take this as a reference point okay so what is not changing you see this pulley the pulley one is uh, kind of fixed right so if pulley one yeah. is fixed what you can do is you can take a line here horizontal line and you consider that this is a fixed horizontal line yeah fixed horizontal line and then you can imagine that there is an observer standing on that line who is uh, like trying to analyze what is happening to these two blocks okay so this is a fixed horizontal line and that is your reference okay. line okay so you can imagine that there is an observer here yeah now from here if i okay. if i write down the position of uh, these two blocks okay so suppose i take position of this block b as yb okay now abhiram yeah. uh, for uh, i think with whatever uh, we have discussed now you understand that block a and then pulley 2 will have the same displacement same velocity same acceleration because they connected yeah okay so can i say that if i if i drop a line here and then say this is the displacement of uh, pulley 2 or displacement position of ya i can say that okay so we will do one thing i'll yeah. just take it as position of y2 okay i'll just take it as position of okay. second pulley is it okay yeah okay now if i take a look at this string okay so this string is important okay the length of the string Okay, so length of the string l i'm going to write it this way okay so i'm going to take uh, maybe uh, from here till here i can take it as yb is yeah. it okay abhiram yb yes yb and plus let's say suppose the radius of this pulley is r1 okay so radius of the radius of the pulley is r1 i'll take this uh, string which is on top of the pulley okay yes. so that would be what pi r1 assuming that uh, pulley is circular and obviously they are circular and then yes, yes. if i take this string portion okay so this string portion that is y2 and i have another portion y2 so i will write it as 2y2 yeah yeah that makes sense and then plus if this pulley has radius r2 okay so this string okay so this string right here okay so that string i'm going to write it as pi r2 uh, are you with yeah. me so far oh, yes, sorry. yes not sorry. square but r2 yeah uh, are you with me 
Yeah, I'm following. Yes. Now what do we do is we take a time derivative. So taking time derivatives on either side, taking time derivatives. So left hand side I have dl by dt. Yes. Right hand side I have the rate at which uh, the position of b is changing. And then I have uh, yeah. let's say pi into the rate at which the radius is changing. Now is the radius changing? Radius of pulley 1. And no, two radius times of pulley 1 is not. Is it changing not. radius of the pulley? No, 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 it's constant. It is a pulley two. Radio, both pulleys are staying constant. Their radius. Okay, so that means, constant. can I say that like our length is not changing and its derivative is zero? So that means this is zero. And so can I say that this is also zero? And this is also yeah. zero. All right. Then what do we get? Yeah. Zero is equal to what is d y b by d t? So can I say that is velocity of b? Yeah. Then plus two times velocity of uh, pulley two v two velocity of two. Uh, are you okay? Uh, well, d y two. Okay. Yeah. Actually, you understand? Yes. Okay. Now. Yeah. What we can do is, uh, I know the velocity of pulley 2 is also equal to velocity of B because they are connected. Yeah. So I can write here 0 is equal to velocity of B plus 2 times velocity of A. Now, what is this suggesting? What is this suggesting? Velocity of B is 2 times negative of 2 times velocity of a. So that means if a goes yes. down, b will go up. That negative sign signifies that. Abhiram, are you okay? Yeah. Yeah, that, that makes sense. Yes. Yeah. And if uh, a is going up, b will go down. Go down. And then if I yeah. take time derivatives here, I will get uh, the acceleration of b is negative of 2 times acceleration of a. So these are the these are sometimes called constraint relations. Okay, constraint relations. Yeah, okay. It's a constraint relation. Uh, are you okay here? Yeah. Okay. Now, whatever we have discussed, I, I, I th this problem is very very important because here we learned how to really relate the accelerations of the blocks. Okay, so you have to understand that uh, when blocks are connected with the help of pulleys, see, in simple problems, yeah, the magnitude of accelerations will be same, but uh, of course, I mean, you will not be uh, seeing every time situations where accelerations are same. Okay, so you will end up uh, looking at problems like this. Yeah. Okay, so do you Okay, so would you like to try this problem? Yeah. yeah. So try this one. Okay, so here, so what is the problem saying? So if I take, yeah, I think lift is, you have to take it as eleva uh, elevator. And then there is a block of mass M lying on the floor of the, elevator now yeah this elevator has acceleration a in the upper direction now let us look at the free body diagram of the uh, block okay so if i'm only worried about free body diagram of the block now here who is observing uh, this is important okay because the block is inside an elevator. We are saying free body diagram of the block with respect to a ground person. Okay, with respect to a person at rest. Yeah. So maybe someone is standing below and then imagine that he is able to look at this block. 
I mean, anyway, we have all these uh, elevators with the glass doors, right? And then I think someone can yeah. actually look at these blocks. Now, what forces are acting on this uh, block? Earth is applying force mg. Yeah. Downwards. Okay. Now the problem says that the block exerts a force of mg by phi on the floor. So if you look at the floor, okay, on the floor, the block is applying force. Okay, so so if I, if I look at uh, this, so let's say I'll call this uh, force, I'll give a sim F, okay, so mg by five. Now, if I look at the block, the block is applying force on the floor. Okay, so Newton's third law says that the floor should apply the same amount of force but in the opposite direction on the block yeah so can i show that here let's say this is the force applied by the floor on the block mg by 5 so this is force on the block by the floor Are you with me so far? Yeah, yeah. Now, if the elevator is going up with acceleration, what is the acceleration of the block if a person from the ground is looking at the block? Sorry, say that again. Okay. See, if the elevator is accelerating, yeah. Can I say the block is also accelerating at the same rate? Yeah, you can say that the you block is also right? accelerating. And again, uh, one thing is uh, we have not showed our arrow correctly. Uh, the reason is the elevator is descending. Right? Okay. So with what acceleration the uh, elevator should uh, I don't know. I think the question, okay, we'll have to change it a little. Okay. Now, in which direction should the elevator accelerate here? Oh. Now, if, if you look Sorry. at this, if you look at the free body diagram of the block, okay. So we'll come to the elevator. Yeah. Okay, so you understand that the block and the elevator should have the same acceleration. Yeah, they so, both have the same acceleration. Ah, so I think the problem also says it is descending. So it is saying that it is going down with some acceleration A. Yeah. So that means the block should also go down with the same acceleration A. Yeah, yeah. So now if I apply Newton's second law, what do I have? Net force is equal to mass into acceleration. Yep. So then I have mg minus upward force is mg by 5. That is equal to mass into acceleration. So here, what is the acceleration that we get? We get it as g by 4. So that means the elevator is coming down with an acceleration of g by 4. Yeah. You, you're okay here? Yes. Okay, so any questions here? No. no. Uh, Abhiram, uh, can you try this problem? Yeah. yeah. Take a look at this problem. Okay, so uh, in this problem two, uh, if the 3 kg block, block A, if it has to go down by 1 centimeter, suppose. Yeah, then this will have to move to the, the right by 2. Very good. Right. So this has to move to the right by 2 centimeters. So now what we can say is, uh, if the acceleration of 3 kg block is A in the downward direction, the acceleration of B will be 2A to the right. Okay, so that definitely yeah not going to have the same magnitude and the same direction. Okay, so this is the first thing that we need to understand. 
then next we will uh, get the free body diagrams so if yeah. i take the free body diagram of uh, b fbd of b so this will be I, again i'm going to show only relevant forces so it is anyway moving horizontally so the relevant force is the tension applied by the string so let's say that is t1 here and we are saying the acceleration is 2a and if i apply uh, newton's second law net force is equal to mass into acceleration horizontally uh, what do i write here so t1 is the only horizontal force okay so there is no friction yeah uh, i i think after this we will start talking about friction so yeah. mass is 4 and the acceleration is 2a okay so we get here uh, t1 as 8a so that's what we have and then now let us look at the free body diagram of uh, block a yeah fbd of block a so gravity is on block a okay so gravity is applying so what force here 30 newtons right 30 newtons yeah okay and then tension force is of covered and then the tension will be uh, it is a different string so i'll have to use yeah. a different tension so then we are assuming that it is going down with acceleration a and if i apply uh, newton second law so 30 will be downwards yeah and yeah. t2 is upwards so 30 minus t2 is mass into acceleration which is 3 into a and again yeah. we have already seen this right if i take uh, the free body diagram of this pulley uh, there is tension t1 here the tension t2 here you know because the pulley is mass sorry <laughs> i don't know why i'm saying that also t so this t1 yeah i'm saying t1 but i'm writing t2 okay, okay so we have already seen this right t2 is 2 t1 yeah so i can uh, use that here so this equation yes. uh, right here so it will be 30 minus 2t1 is 3a so if i substitute uh, t1 so that's 8a is equal to 3a so we get 30 this is 16 so if it goes to the other side 19 a so a happens to be acceleration has, happens to be 30 by 19 a 19 okay so meter per second square now this is the acceleration of uh, a in the downward direction and the acceleration of b will be twice Five this yeah so 60 so that 60 by 19 uh, meter per second square and then that is to the right Yeah. now once we have this i think we can get uh, t1 maybe from let's say this equation right here so i can use that so i have uh, 30 minus 2t1 is equal to so 3 into acceleration is 30 by 90 so i think 2t1 i'm going to retain it on one side so i'll get 30 minus 60 by 90 <clears throat> again 30 into 19 is 570 so we end up having 510 by 19 so t1 would be uh, i think it is like 255 by 19 newtons so you get t1 and then you get also t2 so t2 is simply uh, 510 by 19 newtons are you okay yeah yeah okay <clears throat> okay so i think uh, when we looked at contact forces i said uh, friction is uh, one of the very important uh, contact forces okay now uh, but the value of the frictional force is obtained by 
experiments okay so we cannot really go to the microscopic level and then talk about how these uh, forces actually uh, work this is very complicated we'll not be doing that so what we do is instead uh, we'll try to think about a situation here suppose i have a block placed on a horizontal surface let's say yeah and then okay so here uh, abiram i'm just taking a situation where imagine this block has a mass of 10 kg okay so mass of 10 kg and uh, we're going to consider uh, g as uh, 10 meter per second square now we we are, we are trying to figure out how this uh, frictional force works at a macroscopic level okay so not at a detail level but at a high level can we get some idea okay about it yeah now let's say a person is trying to push this block to the right okay so horizontally a person is applying a force we are calling that as the applied force okay so let's put it as ap and i'm going to give several values in the second column okay i'm going to place several values in the second column and the first column just says whether the block moves or does not move okay now uh imagine if there is no friction at all let's say it's like smooth icy surface how much force do you need to move this 10 kg block if there is no friction at all yeah yeah how much force do you need or do you no, need any can... force at all like like a tiny force would do can yeah this block suppose there is yeah, no friction no... between the block and the horizontal surface is absolutely smooth yeah so any any amount of force will move this block then. any amount of force would move the block right so suppose if it is very yeah. rough extremely rough then you need a very high value yeah okay now when the surface is rough uh i mean if a person is moving the block to the right you can easily uh tell about the direction of the frictional force what is the direction of the friction force the direction of the friction force is opposite to the direction of like the applied force very good so if i take a particular point here in the block and the surface let's say i can say that the surface is applying a force to the left very nice okay so that is the friction force now yeah one thing that we need to understand is uh, friction force opposes relative motion okay so that, that is uh, one important thing yeah frictional force friction opposes relative motion so now friction will be there even when the block is at rest or if it is moving there might be friction again if the surface is rough yeah okay now le let's consider this scenario uh suppose i say that uh somebody is applying a force of uh let's say 15 newtons and the block does not move okay what is the amount of friction force here the amount of friction force it will be the applied force is 15 newton so somebody is applying 15 newton and the block does not move oh yeah so if they if they are applying 15 newton and the block does not move that means the does not move. force is yeah frictional force is greater than 15 right and then if it is greater then do you mean to say oh that... yeah sorry it will be just exactly 15 so very good it yeah, will be exactly greater, 15 so right go the other direction yeah you understand yeah. okay now suppose let's say this person like uh, says okay i'll try to put more effort maybe uh, he eats a burger or something and then he puts more effort okay yeah. so let's say he uh, applies 16 newtons now no the block yeah. does not move then what will be the amount of friction force uh, 16 it should match it right it has to match very nice 16 newtons now the person says okay now i will apply 
18 newtons then still the block does not move then yeah. what will be the so, friction force eight, so now eight, if you eight. see where the friction force has some i don't know some kind of intelligence built into that you, you understand it's like it's like yeah. acting like a smart force okay so the friction yeah. is a smart force yeah so you have to understand friction is a self adjusting force okay I mean, people say that is why friction is kind of a smart force, or we can just say fr friction is self-adjusting. Okay, now the way you can measure the applied force is maybe uh, whoever is applying force, maybe they can actually take the help of uh, some kind of spring mechanism. Okay, so some sort of spring mechanism to up, uh, measure the force. Okay, yeah. so spring mechanism can be used. to measure the force applied okay yeah okay uh, yeah i'm not getting into details of the measurement part even though it is important uh, let's assume that they are able to measure okay yeah. now what this person does is whoever is pushing it uh, we are assuming that is also like able to gradually increase the force okay so he is able to gradually increase the force now when he increases the force to let's say 19 newtons and then if the block does not move i can say that the friction force is still 19 and then when yeah. he increases the force by 19.5 newtons and then still the block does not move i can say it is applying 19.5 newtons now suddenly suppose at 20 newtons also the block does not move and then this will be 20 newtons now if you realize yeah. that at 20.5 newtons the block moves okay so the block moves then what is the amount of friction force what will be the at amount of friction 20. force 20.5 it moves yeah so we can if the block moves then what will be the amount of friction force uh it will just be less than 20.5 right very nice very nice so we it, we can say that it will be less than 20.5 we can say that right very good good yeah. point so but how do i find uh, that means it looks like it looks like frictional force cannot exceed a certain value yeah okay friction cannot be greater than a certain value so that means uh, let's say there is an upper cap to the amount of friction that the surface uh, applies there is a limit right there is an upper cap yeah 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 so there is an upper cap to the amount of friction that the surface applies okay now so because the person has a mechanism to measure the gradual change in the force let's assume let's assume here that uh, as it decreases let's say now he is experimenting okay so now he goes back and then does the experiment again and then he realizes that oh, okay even when the force is let's say 20.1 newtons uh the block moves so that means now he yeah. can say that okay now the friction force might less be than, uh, smaller than 20.1 20. newtons yeah okay so so you he can actually figure out the value of the friction force or let's say the minimum value of the applied force just when the block is about to move right yeah okay so uh there is uh, this like uh, this term called maximum static frictional force okay so when the block is uh, about to move when the block is about to move just about to move okay yeah is just about to move uh 
uh, oh sorry we say that the applied force is almost equal to the maximum possible friction force okay so maximum possible because uh, till that point of time it is not moving uh, we say that it is like th this this word used maximum possible friction or you can say maximum possible static friction or maximum value of static friction yeah okay now uh, let, let's uh, listen to this if we have the ability to measure the applied force gradually and then do this experiment what we would realize is once the block moves okay so suppose uh, the block moves at uh, let's say a situation when the maximum possible friction force is 20 newton suppose okay i'm i'm going to consider this is the maximum possible friction force so i'm going to write it as f max so that means when the applied force is 20 uh, instead of saying no we will say okay barely it is about to move so we will say yes okay okay then if you gradually uh, increase and then decrease when the let's say when the block is in motion okay so th this is an observation that you will have if you have the ability to do experiment okay so when the block is in yeah. motion okay even if the applied force is reduced to say 19.6 newtons or 19.7 newtons say the block is still moving yeah okay so even if the applied force is dropped to let's say say 19. Point, uh, I'm just taking some weird numbers, okay? So 19.6 or 19.7 newtons, the block still moves. So that means the friction force, when the block is in motion, is actually smaller than 20 newtons. Yeah. Block still moves, okay? Okay, so. I think this experimental result, maybe we can sum it up uh, with a graph. Okay, so let's say uh, if I take a uh, vertical axis and a horizontal axis, on the horizontal axis, uh, I think, um, okay, uh, let's take it as a straight line. On the horizontal axis, I'm having applied force. On the vertical axis, I'm having frictional force. Now I'm going to take two zones. Okay, so when the block is not moving, when the block is at rest and the block is in motion. So let's say the block is at rest. And the block is in motion. Hmm. Okay, so block is in motion. Okay, now if you look at the table that we have discussed, uh, as long as the uh, block is at rest, the friction force was matching the applied force. Yeah. yeah, Abhiram? Yeah. So that means when I plot this, I should get a straight line. Okay. So that makes an angle of 45 degrees. Yeah. When it is about to move, I would say that this is the maximum possible friction. Yeah, yeah. And then after that, they have experimentally figured out that the force actually drops a little. Okay, so little and then it stays constant. So this is the oh. kinetic friction. Okay, so this is the kinetic friction. So I'll, I'll mention here. So uh, again, these are important. So F max is maximum possible static friction.
Okay, so Fk is the kinetic friction. When the block is in motion, that is the friction force that the surface applies. And it is found that it is slightly smaller than the maximum possible friction. So this is kinetic friction. Oh, sorry, kinetic friction. Okay, I know we have done a lot today. So, okay. So now one last thing, beta. So here, uh, let's look at it this way. There are experimentally there are two numbers that we have to keep in mind. So yeah. one is uh, coefficient of static friction. Yeah. I don't know. This Microsoft gives me trouble. Okay. So coefficient of static friction. Uh, okay. Now this is defined. It is a definition. Okay. And this is obtained experimentally. So you take mu sub s is a symbol. It is the ratio of the maximum possible static friction that you can apply divided by the normal force acting on the block. Okay. And yeah. then similarly, you have a coefficient of kinetic friction. Okay. This is mu k. This is kinetic friction, ratio of kinetic friction divided by normal force. Okay. okay, so the way we calculate maximum possible friction and the kinetic friction is with the help of this uh, mu k that will be given to us in each of the problems. So it is mu s into normal and the kinetic friction is mu k into normal. Uh, are you with me so far? Yeah. Yeah. yeah? And then you can say, uh, like in any case, the friction that the surface applies is always smaller than or equal to F max. So there will be an inequality here. So mu s into n. So yeah, this, this is important. I mean, what we are trying to do is we're just trying to understand a force law. Uh, which is just obtained experimentally only. We are not getting into the details on how uh, this frictional force actually arises because of that uh, atomic or molecular interaction between the surfaces. It's, it's complicated. Okay, so the idea is uh, at some places there is contact. Okay, so there's some kind of stickiness. Okay, so this kind kind of welding they say they're called cold welds okay this is a lot more complicated so let's not get into that okay yeah uh, but again i mean we should always read about it and then uh, see if we can understand but for us right now it's okay to like leave it aside so the friction force is obtained experimentally okay so the maximum possible friction is mu s times n normal and then kinetic friction is uh, mu k times normal. And then depending on the situation, the normal varies. Okay, So in this particular case, uh, the earth is applying mg and uh, the horizontal ground is applying normal Okay, in the upward yeah. direction. So that normal is mg, but normal is not always mg. We should understand that. So if I go to a different situation, okay, so where if I have an inclined plane, Okay, if I have a block here of mass mg, here mg acts downwards. If I break this into two components, I have mg cos theta in this direction. Okay, mg are a okay, mg cos theta in this direction. So here the normal force is mg cos theta. Okay. So just keep in yeah. mind that normal can vary depending on the situation. Okay. Okay. Uh